That's why I feel like whatever no one was saying, I believe mm -hmm. him because yeah. it seemed very vague just to get hero reworks and hero changes. And this patch is the patch to play the next DPC season on, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So there has to be something more to it. Oh, I'm... yeah, for sure. Like, I, yeah, mm. 100%. Like, I think... I think people would be not upset, but people would just be like, they'd feel like they're missing something Radiant if spell. they had to watch the start of DPC oh, where like the basic construct of the game was the same. Like if you're going into a new year, you kind of expect it. So no, I, I am yeah. so excited for this tournament ending. And then maybe that's what their, their Valve's plan was. You know, it's like, let's change up the heroes during these tournaments, but let's not make it too drastic. Let the tournaments end. And then Ten after that, once we have no more BTS, no more OGA, no more... Like there's maybe a break between Five the Chinese online tournaments, eight. then suddenly that's when you roll out the the next big thing. But uh, it's Dota can only get better because in the new year we're gonna have DBC kick in, we're gonna have whatever happens with the patches, we're gonna have organizations wanna maybe come back and help support these tier two teams because there's now oh, funding yeah, going into it because of that second division. Like it can only get better, and they don't ban out the Viper because guess what? It. They're gonna pick it instead. Dota team are now picking. Well, heavy oh. favorite for a Mitch Viper, so does that mean LeBron Venge and Mitch Viper? I would say, mm, yeah, just off lane Viper, position 5 Venge with yeah. a uh, carry inspector. Unless they want to do Ten some quirky DNZ4 Venge, because they have tried that before, but alas, let's look Five more towards Viking right now. Three. They picked up this Nyx Assassin. It could very well be the off lane still. Yes. It could be that position... Uh, four if they put the fewer oh. into that three roll like there's a lot of flexibility here and i've seen yeah. a lot of seb playing offlane nix yeah and i wouldn't be surprised if this isn't just the offlane another annoying hero where they break down lane and they're always running at you you know they're always in vendetta where is he oh wait oh, he's not here seconds. oh god gotta have sentries and maybe that's what viking are trying to showcase in this first playoff Five series seconds. like Hurry. we want to play with bounty Hurry. we want to play with nix we want to waste your early resources and just you know <laughs> be super in your face pretty pretty much I'm just mm. zazzing over this Earthshaker pick, which is long overdue. Hello, my good friend. It's been a while. I've missed you. And in regards to Radiant why Nyx is maybe good in this uh, pick, it's the idea of the Carapace can always deal with the, the Viper. And then there is that very small scenario where maybe the Nyx gets on top of the Spectre, gets that break, and he blows up. But realistically, that interaction happens maybe... One in a hundred times because Spectre is always playing very deep. Playing off the and, uh, yeah, Viking, they just go, we need that win condition, Five like I mentioned. Ringing. And uh, they just go straight in, pick up that Terror Blade. They want to be able to push. I wouldn't be surprised if Fearing goes for another shard at 20 minutes. It allows for the TB just to have maybe Manta plus one item at 20 minutes. Maybe even a BKB oh, would be great. Bad. And they're going to be pressuring potentially high ground. If they can maybe kill this Viper, there's no way to tower defense or wave clear. This could be a very quick game again. I like the TB pick with the Sunder onto like heavy heavy targets like the Spectre who become super mm -hmm. difficult to deal with later on. It yeah, kind of gives you that bad. extra fighting edge and Spectre kind of doesn't uh, yeah. get get out of hand, so to say. You still have a late game answer to like a 4k HP Spectre. So I like the TB pick in that sense. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Gotta fix my mic in game because I forgot to switch it Ten to my to actual mic. There we go. It should Five be fixed in game. Hurry, right, that's nice. Hurry. I'm also wondering. I had, it, like... I had it on this mic. On this, so basically, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. I had the headset on this. So I realized I had it set to this mic. So if, uh, don't worry, Mr. Dixon Gorged. I fixed my mic to you in game. Shout, shout, shout out to that. Yeah, I, I don't my know. Man. I always I hear some you. people saying like, oh, T Panda's a robot. And I was like, okay. And then I'm actually not a robot. So I don't know. If I'm a robot, just, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll look into Ignore it. Ignore him. It, I, Let I him guess. deal with it. Yeah. Just, just deal with, just debate me and, you know, have a horrible experience listening mm -hmm. to static. <laughs> but it's Viking. Two bands out. <clears throat> Zeus, the best anti aggression, but great against yep. TB, yep. against Perfect Furion. Counter. T and the tiny band, it's just about that big jump. The teeny band, oh, the teeny band, yes, the teeny tiny, and they pick up a storm themselves. Ooh. All right, what that in that the console Ooh, storm. is just the new chen, you know, simple as that. If any hero has the ability to recall you, yes, you're gonna be able to just utilize that and have these mid heroes. So, storm will be always running around the map, blowing people up, being really annoying with all his free mana. And for spider pigs, I have some concerns here where. How do they fight early? Earthshaker does no damage. Darkseid does 
no damage. Venge, guess what? Three for three doesn't really do damage. It's all, there's so much pressure on this like mid Viper to be very clear because that's where they flexed it and they now put it mid against the Storm Spirit. Like this Viper should have a good lane against Storm Spirit. Spectre, he is going to be a little bit under pressure of just non-stop chip, but I am so scared when Viking group up, how do they really defend other than making that big jump where Spectre gets that perfect on and it's... Only 10 seconds. I'm a bit worried for Spider Pig's kind of, not stale, but the better way of describing Five it is really. rigid draft, right? Where... Mm. On paper, you can describe the perfect team fight in that bubble at 5v5, you know? It's like the Viper is the tanky hero, he's he front lines, and the Earthshaker reinitiates. Darkseer hits the big vacuum wall, and the haunt is devastating, you know? But for Viking, it's like so much easier to look away from the 5v5 and go, they have the wave clear, the pick off, the ability to group up early, they've got mixed damage. So, again, I'm very much favoring Viking's draft here, but Spider Pigs, when you naturally can't make early moves, your heroes are normally tanky because tanky heroes also leads with the inability to make moves on the map. It's kind of goes hand in hand in Dota. So Spider Pigs, if they get over that hurdle of Viking, then maybe they become this un this unkillable lineup where defending high ground, this TB pokes his head up. Suddenly there's a big in instant initiation of the slam and they turn it around. So, and we have seen Spider Pigs win games where they play on the back foot and eventually wait for a better timing. So like early, early game, have to look for Viking making the correct moves need spider pigs to dodge those aggression mm -hmm. and then if we get to 30 plus minutes it could be a very amazing close game but for sure viking have the edge in the early game definitely can be and you mentioned about spider pigs being able to hold their ground for a long time if somebody recalls the medusa game it really didn't require much except holding defending and hitting the right timing after a while so if viking gg somehow don't put the pedal to the metal we might just see a tie happen here in our second game but as we get our next se uh, se no, serious <laughs> next game underway, Viking GG this time on the Radiant side, Spider Pigs on the Dire. Game 2 winner either stretches it to Game 3 or Viking GG will be in the finals. I will say, in regards to Spectre though and the patch, the additional cooldown to your dagger, it's an extra 8 seconds level 1 now, which means you still will be able to secure every range creep because of course the time isn't too big. But the extra 30 mana cost is kind of annoying to deal with. You're going to be able to spam out still three daggers, but normally you kind of replenish for your fourth. Now you're going to be doing two daggers replenishing for your third. And we used to see a lot of ring of uh, ring regen spot on, th on specters, maybe two of them. But some specters in the old patch used to go like three or four mangoes to kind of be like a, that pseudo ring, but also that mana. And I think maybe that. that's what we could see specter builds going for going into lane in the future where they realize that they actually need the mana for the dagger because of that nerf, but they also want the region. Mm. So look in the future for potentially more mangoes on Spectre like safe lanes. This time, Salary providing the good luck, have fun. Just quick check. Yep, LeBron's always the one who says it first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. PMA, PMA. And Salary in action with the tree protector. This time he's picked up a Blightstone. I think he had that last time. But now he gets free trading capability onto this Darkseer, who can't really fight against the NP, so I do think this Blightstone is going to be big value. Yeah, it's basically a standard item on the Fury, and you, you get to play behind your Treant to just increase their damage, increase your damage, and mm. you're one of the best zoners in the game. Especially against these melee heroes that want to get on top of you, you can't. You have that, that Treant kind of uh, wall in front of you. And in this type of lane, where it's a shaker plus Darkseer. Maybe if it was like some tiny or some task, Fury is under pressure, but realistically, Celery should never have any issues with uh, what this uh, Spider Pigs offlane will present. Yeah. Double range. Well, technically one and a half range versus two melees. Fissure comes out in TB. 11 armor. Body block, but uh -oh. a bit of damage, but DNC seems to be on the, the receiving yeah. end. Mitch also takes some heavy hits from Metamorph. Also, that's where the value of the Blightstone kicks in further. That first meta drop, maybe in some scenarios, you could see TB dying there. But of course, DNZ being an Earthshaker, didn't really have that kill threat. Dropped Shad low, but not low enough to be threatening. Yeah, he can go for another Fissure, but that's about it. And he is tanking a lot of hits. He's actually wanting to He's... go for Celery, allowing Mitch to maybe get a score here. But no, he won't get it. Shad gets it first, and Mitch oh, even died. Dead. Yeah, there we go. So it was a bit of a nifty play, and it doesn't pay off. Viking get mm. to. 
Good That's side. a strong tip, though, to be fair, mate. And, and good... um... Yeah, yeah. A, a good thing about the NP... Oh, clicking the shop here. Uh, he hits level 2, he teleports mm -hmm. home, and he's got a second teleport spell to bring him back home. Back to lane, I mean. Good old Fury, eh? Yeah. I I'd love to see the day where a pro player levels Sprout to try and get a kill, and then forgets he doesn't have teleportation, like, 99% of his games. TP's back to base and goes, uh-oh. We we've not seen it yet, but I'm I'm ready for the day. To see now we have our first two minutes also rolled out. We haven't really looked at this top lane too much. Nyx is getting a decent amount of CS. Up against the Spectre. We've got the Venge doing pulling action. This actually serves the Nyx a lot. Like I see too many times an off lane with a melee hero going in a 1v1 and still not, like, being able to farm too well. Obviously, like, in these games, you do see any melee versus melee. Just focus on farm instead of, like, trading and fighting against each other. Oh. Though, uh, Nyx getting early product, CS is right? really big. No, for sure, 100%. But this is also a product of the... As Toby gets a little bit tickled, but not really kill threat. When Aramis and Toby have maybe level 4 on Nyx and level 3 on Toby... On the Coddle, sorry. Easily Thug and LeBron are gonna be, you know, food for them. The, the level 2 Impale plus the level 2 Illuminate, it's gonna do so much damage, especially when paired with the eventual point in Solar Mine. Mm. The question for me, or the statement simply is, the lack of changes to the patch in regards to pool camps and map does allow for these type of lanes to exist. Does so he is dropping pretty low. Big trouble and a wow. wave of terror out of all things is enough for a kill. Illuminate. He did miss the stun though, right? Ooh, so. Coddle might still get Aramis. Relentless with this. Might be able to get it. No, the stick charges will save him. And the salve. But that's a broken clarity. Aramis makes them pay. If it weren't for the stick, Dog might have just been dead. 350 <laughs> movement speed Coddle with Windlace picked up first. Watch the tranquil boots. Yeah, Cole is one of those speedy boys. As soon as he gets yep. that tranquils. Have you ever tried uh, memeing around with Coddle with some really stupid builds? In regards to like movement speed. Bots, Yasha. <laughs> yes. Oh, just full yes. Okay, yes. Yours, you're right. reading my mind. <laughs> it's like Sanj and Yasha, <laughs> bots uh, and Yules on a Coddle, and you're just screaming for her, for oh, help. So much damage. I think just movement speed on any hero just feels so good, right? Like. Mm. You can make an excuse like, oh, I want to play my, um, hmm, think of any, my Abaddon with bots plus you, you know, it's yeah. so, so good. Movement is, uh, you know, just walking is actually surprisingly very fun in Dota, or running actually. There you go, I guess it's better running. Yeah, like, like you said that you haven't really played any other games except Dota. I remember playing this game called Road Rash on my Sega, Sega Saturn when I was mm -hmm. like five years old. It's basically damage. a game of like, you drive bikes and you try to hit people and try to win. Like you have like these chains and spikes and yeah. you have like these uh, <laughs> uh, police batons and all that stuff. So it, it kind of reminds you of like if an Abaddon went movement speed, it's like you just slapping and run and kind of like yeah, just, exactly. <laughs> just chasing you to the finish line. Meanwhile, Boom, he's been, uh, he's got a lot of dots from Noob and Noob looks to take a kill. And there we go. Viper punishing the Storm Spirit. At the and same time, where... bottom celery also very low, 60 HP, getting burnt up, and he will die. DNZ okay. with the iron shell. Nice, nice from Spider Pigs, and this is what they need. They need to be able to have this strong laning phase to be able to allow themselves an even playing field, that, so that when Viking want to group up for that early push, they have at least that one item, maybe an early blink dagger from an activated DNZ mm -hmm. or. Terribly having to go jungle a lot quicker. Yeah, well, a might really have to nice go really though. soon yeah. because he's being punished under tower. Trying his best. Mitch is tanking hit from the tower. And the NC, the Iron Shell will be enough. So it's a trade one for one. But the NC can teleport away. And they kill the TV as well. So that means every core on Viking has now died once. But now, Terrorblade will just go to the jungle. Celery will probably just kind of lap up the farm here. And when he hits six. He'll probably look to ult and then maybe try and pressure the top lane with the Coddle plus Nyx. Having that early six could be a big window back into the game. But the issue now for Viking is simply this Viper is having a great time mid 39 for 17 compared to the 35 3 on Storm. And he's forcing Storm to jungle. We just spoke about Terrorblade potentially, depending on the aggression, could be going to the jungle shortly. Yeah. He's just yeah, staying in bottom. Like, do you want to put all your cores in the jungle just because you're kind of no. forced to do it? Meanwhile, Toby with the help of Aramis gets to kill on LeBron. 
is you're going to put yourself in a vulnerable spot if everybody's jungling. So I guess TB is still realizing I can still lane for a little bit longer. Exactly, but for how yeah. long is like you need to be really careful. Information the, on the comms is super big right now for for uh, like GG. Mm -hmm. But also the fact that you have this ward on the bot side of the map scouting out DNZ leaving, allowing the Darkseer to be independent. And also we didn't really talk about the fact that Darkseer, after like minute six plus, he likes to play behind the tower. So Terrorblade is such a great hero against him in the idea that he can just farm in front of the tower. And uh, so the idea and the discussion of going to jungle and Shad never actually should happen because he's against a Darkseer. He can just always just play in front of the tower away from him. And this is where Mitch, he has to decide, mm. do I want to try and pressure with a, like an Earthshaker and remove that oh. potential? Toby does die in the top lane, meanwhile. He does. Yeah, that was... Toby was already in Vendetta. He was running away from the sentry because the stun mm. was thrown onto his carapace. I was like, is he really going to die? And then the Shaker just throws in a level 3 Fissure right in the face and squashes the bug. Nice. So it was a good Shaker rotation towards the top lane. And now setting off for mid onto Boom, though. This is a level 6 Storm with a jump, so this is a whole lot more different. He's already expecting it. Yeah, that one's actually going pretty well for, for spider pigs. It is, it is. And we can look at net worth as well. It's not too bad. Like, even though Storm is the last in farm, as we said, that the Viper is really enjoying his time. TB dying once is still seven, uh, 3,700 in net worth. So this TB is definitely not shut down. That That is for sure. No, yeah. And you see this early lead flickering between 1 to 2k. It's the idea that... Spider pigs, they have to use so many resources to get these kills. Like Earthshaker's roaming the map looking for that one fissure. Uh, Viper's diving towers for that one kill. And Spectre's kind of getting whatever he can in top. Darks is getting whatever he can in bot. Meanwhile, Viken, even if they die, you have this terrible just free farming bot. You've got Nyx lapping up the farm. Like everyone's hitting creeps and also utilizing the jungle early on. Terrorblade, he farms lane, he farms hard camp. Storm, he farms mid, he farms the, the side camp as well. Like, they're able to maximize the most at the map compared to spider pigs where they're kind of locked into just doing one thing and that is mm. trying to apply pressure because if they don't apply pressure viking have this insane team timing we mentioned it during the draft but the fact that when nix gets in ven his vendetta he starts scouting out these stats scouting out what spider pigs are trying to do suddenly spectre can't play that one one x4 type strategy where four play one side of the map spectre plays by himself because if he does get caught by the Knicks, that break comes into play. Suddenly, Cottle recalls in a Terror Blade who messes with a Scardi, for example. Like, the game from Spider Pigs needs to be aggression in lanes, set the early pace of the game, have really good tower defenses, and then go equal in itemization. And uh, that's where we look for Viking and go, okay, they're 2k up right now, barely 2k, sorry. Once they get to maybe Dragonlance plus one item on Terror Blade, they're going to look to maybe go for Roshan, look for these early towers, and then really close up the map and punish mm. the lack of mobility and greediness of a Viper, Dark Suspector, Tricor. Yeah. That was a long rant. I do apologize. That was a long rant. That's a, that's a lot to soak in, but uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically that's what's going to happen in the, in the Thank you. coming minutes, so to say. So I'm like, I can't say anything except, yes, I agree. Thank you, okay. Tigo. No worries. Um, we could maybe use this time to talk about something else. Uh, what is your favorite hero in the, in oh, the man, patch? Questions in the patch. Yeah. Um, this is a difficult or one. Or the most sense. favorite change. Like, did you read anything and go, oh, I like that? You don't have to have practiced it or seen it or tested it, but just like, did you read anything and go, damn, let me see a bit more of this, please? Well, at least outside of the, the disappointments I had with no changes to the, the map and the economy, mm -hmm. but that's coming later, so I might still be redeemed. I think uh, my yesterday's experiments with the carry Omni Knight. I know it sounds okay. goofy. It now sounds silly. It's it's it was actually quite fun because you do pure damage on your shard. It's a six second cooldown. You heal yourself a little bit. It it's mm -hmm. not big. It's based on your base <laughs> damage, so it's not okay. too great. But I think that was that was cool in a sense. It was fun to try. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the the gyrocopter ag shard as well. You have a secondary target for the rock, rocket barrage. I did try that out as well. It seemed fun. But you're like, okay, this is magical damage, and still you're doing like 600 damage, 500 damage per like uh, every yeah. time you're like, you're you're doing like an average of 400 DPS basically. But it's magical damage, which can get mitigated, can get soaked up, and it just doesn't scale too great. So it's fun, but still kind of like a lot of stuff in this patch. This is this is my genuine opinion. I feel like some of the stuff in the patch is like, well, 
it, it looks cool, but nah. It's kind of yeah, like for every like yeah. It, the it, it's kind of like okay, you you get overwhelmed with like okay, we got yeah. twenty new things, and then you're like yes, 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 and the more you read, you're like uh, uh, uh. so you might just get overwhelmed a little bit. So let's just say, ask that question again for me like a week or two when we get like the, okay. the new changes, and right. then I can really give you like man, I either love it or I hate it. But like I said, I want something radical. I'm still waiting for that radical stuff to come out. That's my right. There we go, round Brilliant over. Aggression though, next in Medetta in the top lane. Yeah. Well, aggression and aggression. <laughs> Hugging contest. Mitch might actually take a kill in his 1v3, but uh, it's a vacuum. It's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> but meanwhile, on top, they're chasing Toby. He's been uh, appearing in Spider Pig's area to farm. Fissure, gonna get it out. Yes, you will. Waiting for the Carapace stun. No, we're really gonna the help Shaker well. much in the tower, yeah. No word to run. Yeah, and we're seeing the difference between Toby in the first game to this game. When he was playing the Bounty Hunter, he was tracking, running around, being annoying. This game, I don't, we don't, we haven't really seen a, a big successful vendetta that leads to a kill. And, uh, it is a matter of patience because eventually, when he has his storm, his terror blade, able to play with him, yeah. it will be an entirely different game. Oh, this, now, is a, this is a sad attempt from Spider Picks because LeBron's still level five. If they had swapped, they could have actually got this kill. But now it's all a Vike and Gigi on top of those heroes trying to come for a gank. The end. He's dead. Noom is dead. LeBron is gonna die. They just killed a Celery in H's profit, and it took so long to get it as well because they didn't have swap yet. Level five Venge walking in with the stun. And all of Viking just collapse on top of him for a three to one trade. A stun on Spectre, but no fall off from Shatter. But arms. also, the value of this Coddle, right? You have that recall come into play. He just brings in the yeah. Storm. He puts the Solar Bind onto that Viper, who naturally is quite a tanky yeah, hero. Exactly. He has 20% magic resist. You slap a Solar Bind on him, that reduces 15%. Now you only have a 5% magic resist because of your, your corrosive skin. That's not that tanky. That's pretty darn squishy. And he just blows mm. up to the Storm. Like, Kotal is a amazing fire. hero. I am yes. so excited to watch Nygma play with GH back on his Kotal in that position 4 role. I think they, like, I'm just so giddy for DPC. As long as Kotal doesn't get hit by how some, many, like, massive nerfs. How, how many times are we going to actually get the Kotal through the draft, though? I think that's going to be a big question. But that also means we'll that see. if we talk about Nygma, for example, that means that Coddle and Io will be your first face bans and it allows every other hero to come through basically. So you gotta you gotta pick your poison in a sense. But for Viking GG's sake, since they're the ones playing right now, um yeah. if if they get to play this Coddle more, if they get to play and work around it, this can be super dangerous for them. And if they keep on going with uh, experimenting with the meta and creating the meta even, I think they might have a huge advantage for them as well with the hero pools. Radiance bottom tower Having that adaptability fire. and the compatibility to play around with. However, there's a lot of action in mid, Radiance or traffic more to say, attacked. waiting for the action to actually kick off. Yeah, it's kind of just walking around, just kind of going, do you want to fight? Nah. All right, we can just walk around together, that's about it. Mm. Spider pigs, they, they don't really ever kill anything. Unlike Except thug. Boom. Oh, well, spider pigs aren't killing thug. I hope not. That's not I how the patch well, works. Mentally, maybe. Let's see if they can kill something. Toby's the one to take the bait here in mid. We don't have available on the caudal right now, so it's a one for one, but it's not the best because you're also losing your tower and top. Shad's still hitting this tower. He's gonna have to back away momentarily, but here comes the treants. Gonna tank the hits while he's clearing the wave. Meanwhile, Spider Pigs, we're gonna go ham on this tower in mid. We're gonna use Haunt. We're gonna come back into this fight. Aramis is the target, and so is Celery. But Celery is just the only one to fall, and Viking GG, they've already backed away. And the siege still keeps on going. The Glyph comes out, and Shad is still pushing this tower. They finally get the tier one in mid, and Shad, he gets this tower, does he? He's got the illusion hitting it. No, he's not gonna get it. deny it. The melee, the melee unit. No! Cry chop. Okay, go on, Mitch. You got this, brother. He's gonna Hit keep yourself. it up for now, but he's the <laughs> no ki no tower kill for Shad. Not not okay. now, at least. All right. All right, here you go, Mitch. Moment of truth. Hi. Give us that normal punch. Uh, no. no, no, no. I was waiting for it. I hope we just see Shad run up there and plow like three illusions mm. when he buys the Manta. 
if 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 normal punch was usable on buildings, you could make like a copy of a tower, you know, like. <laughs> no, I'm just picturing that you'd be able to physically move towers. So Dark Souls just surges in yeah. and just Imagine yeets just... the tower into like the jungle. Yeah, this would be funny, like uh, you know, just stacking your high ground with this bunch of towers here in mid, you know. Yeah, guys, have we taken the tier one yet? Because we can't hit the tier two. No, where's it gone? Oh, where the doctor just karate chopped it to the high ground. Oh no. Dog being chased up on his side of the map and they've not reacted to this fast enough. And Spectre in trouble. The rod comes out. He's got 40 HP, but he's still going to go down. And Viking GG, can they get out in time is the big question. Celery once again takes the bullet for the team. Toby also takes a few nasty hits from Nude. He's going to lose his life. And Celery, well, he's still juking. He gets a courier on the way. Sprouting. Oh, he's toying with these boys. There's a rod. Oh, here comes Boom. He's actually coming back in. The Echo Sun comes out from DNC. They're going to take down Celery. They're going to look for the Boom Killers. Well, they will. Swap save from LeBron. Echo Slam from DNC. They secure more kills than they were actually available to get. They weren't supposed to get this many kills. Now they might even find a Coddle. Maybe. Since Shaker. Okay, he didn't have mana. Now he does. Fissure off looking. one second. Now you need to find the right angle. Oh, he's got it. Oh, that was nice. He's got, he's got it. Beautiful. And now as a Viking, they were really trying to play around this. Coddle Recall onto the Storm. Ab abuse the fact that Storm always has full mana. But then you have DNC perfectly placed between both the Ancients and that hard count. Storm gets slapped up by us like a three or four unit Earth shot. And then the Age of Layered on top. Viking getting punished for over aggression. But. Is this not reminiscent to game one? We are seeing spider pigs able to punish the overaggression. We are seeing them able to rebuttal or take away this, uh, this, this need for Viking to find fights. But the net worth yeah. is still Viking saving. Terrorblade is still farming. And then Mitch. Yeah, there was then there was a dark seer. <laughs> yeah. Boom shows up and quickly destroyed. And I love that. When you have this pos 5 nature's prophet, Celery, after the previous team fight, respawned, instantly teleports to the ag oh, sorry, to the bounty rune, and he steals it at the 15 minute mark. He gets away because Shaker didn't have mana from the previous engagement. No stun cancel. The Road of Atos doesn't connect and just TP's home. So this NP can just be a nuisance. Since he's the support, you never know where he's going to be next. If it was a if core, you always see him coming in lane. Oh, he's not. All right, the key difference in this game, he realizes that Spectre, Viper, Earthshaker, Darkseer can all to some degree... I shouldn't... Darkseer, Viper, Spectre can all to some degree deal with the uh, the split pushing game. So, mm. we're not seeing the shard yet. Aww. Oh, in chat. Sad face. Sad face. Nothing new here. Fairy Trinket, the only newer jungle item for the Darkseer. Extra health. Yep. Tiny bit of spell damage. Doesn't really buff the Darkseer oh, that much, Mitch, but the mana cost mate, reduction is dying. nice, however, but he's just getting hunted. And this is a dark. Uh, sorry, this is a storm spirit who doesn't even have a bloodstone yet, and he is around the map. Well, it's mainly the coal, you know. The it is the coal, but that's the, that's the thing. Like you don't even need bloodstone to be able to just zip and zap and be everywhere because you have yeah. Coddle helping you out, doing all this Very stuff active. for you until you have the bloodstone. Once you have the bloodstone, I don't even want to know what happens with that that storm spirit Coddle combo after that because then storm is literally everywhere. It's going to be very hard to deal with. And it, it's the product of Spider Pigs, two games in a row. Their draft, it looks good on paper, the five set of heroes. But when you think about the intricate fights, the early game, the meta that we have, it is victim to just over aggression and their lack of being able to take fights continuously. They can take one big fight, but they can't take two, three smaller skirmishes uh, back to back. And that's where, when you have Storm Spirit, Nyx, Fury, and even the Cold to some degree, they are experts in just poking and prodding and forcing out a big key spell. And then that's when you have the Terror Blade really come in and capitalize on the lack of a slam or the lack of a horn. 10k net worth already on Shad. He has Manta, he has Dragon Lance, he has one component towards Skadi. And when he gets that Skadi, He's probably going to look just to group up with his team and really just force it home. Yep. TB looking really good. That 10k before the 18 minute mark. I, ta I talked to you a couple times about that, haven't I? Mm-hmm. That you is have. a good sign. That is a good sign. It is a, have. yeah. It's not too shabby. That's the, that's the, it's the, not the British way of saying it. There we go. It's a... Uh, Actually, no, somebody just somebody might say it's bloody brilliant. There we go. It is bloody brilliant. What else? We need. Uh, I think you need to teach me some uh, 
some new. Uh, you know what? Yeah, before yeah. For tomorrow, okay. for the grand finals, uh -huh. I'll get like a playbook of just like oh yes, over the top British phrases, and oh, we'll try and work as many in. Some new stuff that I can shout and play by play. You know? Yeah, no, exactly. And if anyone has any phrases, <laughs> that you know, I was about to oh, no. <laughs> if anyone in Twitch <laughs> has any oh, phrases that you want to be careful use. what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean like stereotypical British phrases that we, mm. you want to work into the grand finals. We can then play, you know. T Panda, T Governor, Bingo, and you can see if you've mm. you've caught them all. You know. I'm not so sure. For example, was it, I'm not sure. Was mm -hmm. it with you or was it with Kips when we had uh, was it NIP play and we were like some team fight needs to be absolutely bonkers because of because of bonkers. Um, maybe that was me. I it think... I've been actually with you, yeah. Yeah, we I were think that looking was me. for it. We were That's why I'm really done, however, I'd say. Celery, TP cancelled. Quick pick off on the NP. Anything else happening on the I map? We know he's dead, season. so we can just jump away. <laughs> Nothing else. Toby farming bot. Arama's pushing top. Still 6k lead for the spot of pigs. And we got a BKB on the Viper. Yeah, this is their big timing to go. Though. They have the BKB on the Viper. They have a blink on Earthshaker. They're smoking up. They have to kill the TB, though. If they don't kill the TB in this smoke, and their biggest power spike in the next five minutes, they are going to have some issues where suddenly TB gets that, that Scardy for free. He actually goes for a BKB. Oh, LeBron. Echo slam instantly, but Boom has dodged it. Oh, Boom has what dodged a great! How, dodge. did, how did he dodge that though? That is unbelievable. Just zippy zappy. He's out of there. LeBron is yeah. going chased up by Boom. Hits by uh, gets hit by the NPLT. He's out. Viper, you still got that BKB, but you're set. Oh, you're just, stuck behind the he's just a, Oh he, no! He's just surprised and stuck and blocked and everything. Viking GG, two kills. They could take Roche with this metamorphia. But Boom with that big play. I, yeah. it, it happened so quick, I didn't even realize that he actually dodged the Echo Sam. Yeah. The key thing here is though, Shad, he identified that his team are extremely powerful right now. So he changes from the Scard, he just goes straight BKB. They win a big fight, they get Aegis. So that next fight, he's going to have BKB, he's going to have Aegis. He's going to be pretty much unkillable to what Spider Pigs have. Like, if you look at Spectre right now, only has Blade Mail Yasha. Like, pretty much three items away from being able to kill a uh, Terra Blade. Like we've already mentioned, the Viper BKB. It's surviving, but it's nothing much. And yeah. They're gonna it's kill hard. Toby, but Toby's gonna sack his life for the sake of Roshan. But they might get a chance to reinitiate Impale onto two. And here's the Ignis. Connects onto the Darks here. Horn comes through from the Spectre Thug. Yasha Blade Mel Spectre. Can he do enough damage? Can he kill off a Celery? There's DNT to help him out. Yep, they have the damage to take down an NP at least, making it two for zero, but still, Aegis has been secured for boom. Yeah, and the key thing there is Haunt was used, right? Haunt was Haunt used. Was, so now, Two minutes. as soon as Meta's back up, you're going to have this disparity of time where Meta's available for sh uh, for Shad, but there isn't no Haunt for Thug, and that's going to allow Viking to maybe look to utilize his Kotal, TP in the Storm, and look for a big fight. Indeed. Boom's already planning to go in. Some illusions to bait a little bit. Fisher comes out. They got the Rod. They're holding the Storm Spirit in place. They might just blow up the Aegis. Yes, they do. Nice. But still, what is your capability after that? It might have just been a bait all along because they wanted to force spider picks into this fight. Meanwhile, Boom just jumps onto Mitch at the same time. The swap comes from LeBron, saving Noob for now. But the Storm Spirit is still bullying the Darks here. He's going to get the Darks here. They also get one, two, and maybe Noob as a third. The Ignis will be used as well. That You call, talked about that cooldown. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, got it again. And we did see the Cottle, no, the, the Fury go for the. A shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, surprise, surprise. Yeah. 9k lead to Viking. They are so scary when they push. They've got, like, this double aura on Fury in the mech, the hood. He's going to be so tanky. Completes the pipe. Will mitigate mm. the, the Echo Slam or the Viper initiation. And it's. Viking are slowly getting to that unkillable state. Spider Pigs, the only way that they can take a fight right now is that, like, Clutch perfect initiation where the dark still gets jumped. He can then vacuum two or three heroes into a slam on a never toxin and then maybe take the fight. But right now in the open area, the Nyx, the Storm, these heroes are just really picking apart the uh, picking apart spider pigs. I have to say I was a bit worried there for a while because for spider pigs, knowing that their haunt was on cooldown and they had a chance to blow up the Aegis, but it's like, yeah, you're getting a bit overconfident here because you know you can, but as soon as you do, you're like, okay, we're out of tools. And then Spike and GG just swipe away four heroes. So that, in my opinion, that was a great use of the Aegis just for a bait. So what a weird game. There's only one new neutral item on either team. So Spider Pigs have the fairy tr Fairy's Trinket from Tier 1. Obviously, yeah, they're not really yeah. using that right now. Oh, yeah. And Viking have the Bullwhip, oh. which is, of course, a 
you know, a fan favorite, but Celery it getting jumped. It is a fan favorite. Ignis drops out. Echo Slam comes through as well, but it doesn't connect onto Boom. We're hoping for it. Here comes Shad. BKB, Metamorph absolutely pummeling. And three gone. BKB on Noob runs out. The stun from Toby. There will finish off the Viper. Four kills for Viking GG. And this is a scary Viking machine. That well, spider Spike makes it the face. They really tried to go for a, for a cheeky little fight there, didn't they? But without any items without any and a items, wasted Echo Slam. The, yeah, the just Echo Haunt is still up, but it's like a tiny bit of disconnection there to make to make it actually look like a whole fight for spider Pigs. It looked like a, a portion of an attempt. Again, they killed the Nature's Prophet. This, this is like Celery is just enjoying, like, okay, give it to me, boys. It feels bad for spider Pigs as well because they can't seem to find any openings. And Toby is going to take away these openings as well. The Shaker thrown into the air and he's gone. Spectre also being a target of some damage. Being solar bound. Dude, these trees are amazing. They are flip the swap again. They got Toby, but Doom comes in. The haunt, not the haunt, that's actually the reflection from Shad. And they've point clearing out already two heroes. The Vorn, LeBron is dead. Noob is dead. Thug, he's only got one option, and that is to run. I mean, while Mitch, also dead. Last man surviving, last man standing, is Thug. In the eyes of Vike and GG. Another reflection comes through. Hunting up the Spectre. Sprouts is there, so that he's gonna block your path. Boom. Zaps through to create those big treants at the same time. And Darkseer forced to buy back. No buyback on the Spectre. No buybacks on anybody on Spider Pigs. Darkseer just used the last one of their team. Fake backing by the looks of it. They just don't have to leave the base. Like they just keep going. They're just a push lineup without any pressure, realistically. Where's the damage? Where's the control? Yep, 30 seconds Spider for Echo. They're trying their best. 30 seconds for Echo on that. Oh, the tower's falling. All oh, the swap actually goes through. The, the fountain, swap into Fisher is going to be enough. And meanwhile, Aramis. Like a GG. What the heck? Okay, they're going to get Aramis away. The Treant's still slapping at that tower. But Viking GG is now going to have to leave. Okay, what was that? Boom. Answer. <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> Why are you having fun, Boom? Why are you having fun? <laughs> yeah, instead of Boom, it's just Boo. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah? Okay, well, that was just a play, you know. Swap into the stun. This time it went through. He's been dodging them pretty well so far, but didn't quite dodge this one. Maybe a bit overconfident, but uh, still doesn't change. The course of this game, Viking GG, 20,000 gold ahead, mid secured, top is open for the taking, and bottom still tier 1s and tier 2s. Toby setting up for a stun onto DNZ, the backup is arriving, the vacuum comes through, the stun is there as well, but the sprout from Celery holding them in place, the Illuminate comes through as well, and there's the Metamorph Shad, just throwing out some crazy hits at the time, Dance, then they also have Thug controlled, and Spectre dropping low, 400 HP, another Ignis connection comes through, the blinding light is there as well, and Chad will get the kill, and they take down the Spectre, they're gonna take down Noob, and they're gonna put down this Spider Pigs team, if we talked about something relating to Christmas, this might be for a horror story, but it looks like we're gonna have spider pigs for our little... Well, our Christmas table's gonna have at least some some kind of a feast. Some kind of a cute meat. Um, yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, spider pigs, they're, they're out. They're out. They're, they're eliminated. Out. Thank you. It's been a pleasure watching you. We thoroughly enjoyed it. But my golly gosh, did Viking really showcase how, first of all, Cottle He's going to be tweaked a little bit in the coming weeks. I think he's just a little bit too good, especially with the 15 second recall and the fact that he just buys Axe and has everything going for him. It's a great hero. There's Solar Bind. That magic resistance is 15% level one. Probably he's going to be scaled to like maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 um, because it's kind of a bit bonkers being like 15 left straight away. But yeah, I I really like the the idea that in this series alone, Viking showed that in two games, Toby's playing these offlaners that are kind of like uh, tempo setting heroes in which mm. they're not the traditional team fighters, but in the first game, you have this bounty running around tracking, forcing out the kills, but also keeping up the net worth. In the second game, you've got a Nyx where he can hard counter this Viper, forces by uh, Viper to go BKB, but then also goes for a Yules. So you can never surge away. You can never have that activated core running around the map that quickly. And yeah, I just, I, it was so refreshing to see Viking come into a series with a, a slightly new perspective and of course the patch does help that and they they look very scary i don't think we ever thought viking should lose this series but i think mm. 
whoever gets to the grand final against it, it's going to be a very, very good series. And maybe you're going to have to look towards, do they respect the Kotal? Because it was very, very good in both these games. It was. And overall, the game plan for Viking GG, like they're a very solid team. They don't really give spider pigs that much of a chance. Uh, game one, same thing as well. Just, you know, a, a thorough, very basic, good performance. Spider pigs just not matching up at the same level. Though, I did enjoy the amount of growth that the Spider Picks team yeah, has sure. shown throughout this tournament. That they, they started off sloppy and then they improved from there. So <laughs> usually you see yeah. a team just be completely disconnected. Like after a 2 0 stomp in the first round, you're like, yeah, they're going to get 2 0 in the next series. And they usually do. And you're like, what happened with them? But they really improved their gameplay. They beat the opponent they lost to before, made it to here, got to play against Vike and GG. And well, if, if Spider Picks don't have any games after this and any other tournament, well, I mean, it's not a bad opponent to lose to to uh, start enjoying your Christmas holiday holidays in a sense but if i can gg we'll get to play another series tomorrow with this victory mm -hmm. however t still got another series after this we do mate yes we've got team spirit formerly known as yellow submarine against uh, live to win it'll be an absolute corker because uh, the winner has to play up against a very scary looking viking and it will be the last tournament that these uh these big european tier two tier three teams mm -hmm. get to play before dpc kicks in so Nice little cash grab. So, uh, yeah, should be a good one. Definitely should be. So, we're going to take a break and we will return with our final series of the day Team Spirit versus Lift to win our next best of three after the break. So, we'll see you then. See you then.